alien entities, what are they? What does that mean? In this series of teachings, Dr. Lester Sumrall talks about the spiritual aspects of people with multiple personalities and those plagued with clinical depression. He also shares how the church should have the answers to any human problem, including alien entities. Stay tuned for this fascinating series that teaches people how Jesus Christ can set people free. I'd like to welcome you again to uh, one of the lessons related to uh, alien entities. Uh, this is a truth whose time has come. In, in Martin Luther's day, a truth had come. It was justification that a man could get to heaven by believing in the blood of Jesus without carrying out all kinds of church-related activities that were not in the Bible called traditions. And that time had come. And, and when John Wesley came to the world preaching a form of holiness that was not, uh, had not been preached before that time, a time had come for such a message to the world to clean it up and cause it to live a clean and holy life in God. And so we have a truth that its time has come. And, and when I get the feeling that I can't tell you how strong it moves on the inside of me. And that we in this class do not seek just to fill you with ideas and, and fill you with various scriptures. We hope to fill you with a, with a strength and a power and an authority that you shall set many free. That you'll do it in great humility. That you'll do it without, without fan flair. That you'll just do it. <laughs> the devil will even be surprised it'll all be over before he gets started you know just do it and it'll all be finished and 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 you won't need to put it in the newspaper uh, you'll just keep on doing it from person to person and we believe we have come to such a beautiful time we are studying the primary abode of alien entities and uh, we'd like for you to move back one page from 15 to page uh, 14, please, if you would. Uh, where do these alien entities uh, reside? You know, demons principally live in the air uh, above the earth because the devil is the prince and the power of the air. Where in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, uh, according to the prince of the power of the air, so you walk by him. Uh, the spirit that now worketh in the children of, of disobedience, you know, the, the, those rebellious and those people that are, that are pagans. Uh, you, you were that one time, but now you have turned to be something else. It might be that they also have access to regions below the earth's surface. Uh, we have scriptures that reveal that they bring these spirits out of uh, uh, deep waters and, and, and out of pits and so forth. So it might be that some are also in those areas. It could be possible that a headquarters of, of, of the devil is on the moon. They're spirit beings, you see. And there's no biblical scripture for this, but we just know that the moon has a tremendous effect upon this earth. If someone goes crazy, they call him lunatic, which means moonstruck. Uh, me medical science has stated that in patients in mental hospitals become very unstable at a certain period of the moon. They may be normal for 28 days, then become stark raving mad for the other two days of the month. And this is, this is a thing that should get, be given further study. And living among primitive people of the world, for example, in the jungles of Brazil, you couldn't get a, one of those people to go out on a full moon night without a covering on his head. Man, he'd, he'd, he'd wrap a sack around his head if he didn't have a hat. You see, he, he'd say immediately, I don't want to get moonstruck, a lunatic. 
and, and, and if a person goes crazy, they say, moonstruck, he went out the moon the wrong time. And, and so uh, there is a relationship there of no, of no special importance to you and me because it don't matter where he makes his headquarters, we're going to tear him down anyway. Amen. We do know that spirits, alien entities, do live in dry places. And that is where Jesus sent them in Luke 11 and 24. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, uh, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. None, he says, I will return to my house and, and from whence I came. The people out in Arizona and Texas said, stop sending your spirits into dry places. <laughs> They've already got it up. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, direct them back up the other way then. Put them back on the moon. That'll be a better place for them. Uh, spirits also live in evil places, in evil places, uh, places where crime and murders have been committed. Uh, I, I, went in, I went into the, uh, in, into France after the war, and many of the people told me there uh, that certain areas that you just couldn't stay in. You could hear the tromping of military feet at night. You could hear beating of drums at night. You could hear the shooting of cannon, and they said, we can't stand it here. And you hear the groaning and the crying of the dead. And, and so in places of tragedy, in places of tragedy, you have these things. I don't very often tell it, and, and I, 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 I may tell it a little later in a series like this, but I was in a home in, in Denver, Colorado, of a very fine Christian man. And uh, it was a very large house with a lot of money. And I slept in a back portion of it away from, uh, away from his area or where he and his wife were staying. It was uh, close to the garage, clear in the back area of it, very beautiful room, kind of like an apartment you'd have for a guest coming in or something like that. And I, I was sleeping away in this part, and about two o'clock in the morning, I was awakened, and there in the door, I could see uh, the, the, the silhouette of a, of a woman. And the room was dark, you know, but, th but there was a woman there, and I could describe her. Sh she had long, light hair, uh, a Scandinavian type, had blue eyes, a very sad face, and a little gun about that long in her hand pointed toward her belly. And all she had on was a negligee. Well, I looked at it. I said, that, that's interesting. <laughs> so I, I turned on the light, and I said, you know, you know what I think? You know, we usually think wrong, don't we? She says, you know what I think? I think somebody's killed somebody here and hid their bones under this room. I'm going to go down and have a look at them. So I, I went into the closet there. You know, they, they, they have these trap doors for, uh, for getting underneath the house. And so I pulled it up, and they had a, you know, space under there about 24 inches high. And I looked all around under there, and there were no bones. And so the, the next morning, I confronted the man who was a friend of mine, and I said, sir, someone was killed in this house. Oh, he said, no. It was a magnificent home. He said, no. I said, I'm telling you someone was killed in this house, and I'm further telling you that you two have had problems here. They looked at each other, and I said, now, you just go and talk to some neighbors that have lived here a long time. I'm telling you a woman died in this house. Now, now that was talking hard, you know, when you're a stranger. Uh, I mean, I had never been in the house before. Well, well he, he got out of the house and, and went to the neighbors and said, I've just bought this big, beautiful home over here a few months ago. Uh, I said, uh, who lived there before? And they said, uh, a, a Swedish doctor. Says, uh, uh, why did he move away? Says, in the, in the back room, his wife shot herself and she died in that back room. He came back over there and his hair was sprouting out the wrong direction. <laughs> he said, how did you know that? I said, oh, I saw her there. Says, well, what did she want to do? I says, the spirit of suicide is in this house. And then he told me the truth. He said, the first time in my life that I'd ever thought of committing suicide was in this house, and I'd been told by a spirit four or five times that the best way out of this was to take my life. Now, alien entities can live in places of tragedy. Now, and I'll be getting to this more again, but a friend of mine in England had three daughters. And he moved into a certain house, and one of the daughters lived in a certain room, and, and she died in there. And, and, and she begged to get out of the room. She said, get me out of this room. Please let me out of this room. I'm going to die in this room. And the father laughed at her, but, but she died. He put another girl of his daughters in there, 
After a few days, she said, let me out of this room. Please let me out of this room. He was a hard-headed man. He said, no, and she died. And then he came and said, what in the world am I going to do? And Brother Howard Carter, a good friend of mine, says, well, seeing that you have no power to do anything, you better move out of the place because you've only got one more left. Now, no doubt a terrible tragedy took place in that place there, and that spirit of that tragedy was dwelling there and destroyed those two lives. Are you with me? Amen. All right. The spirits can live in evil places where there's been crime, where there's been murder, where committed, have been committed there. You go into jails and places like that, you find all kinds of evil entities that are there, oppressive things that are there. Because in, in those places is where terrible stuff has been committed, and the men that come in there with those spirits, leave them there. If you live in a house that seems to be un, unusual or oppressive, you do one of two things. You can rebuke the spirit in Jesus' name and cast them out. If you can't do that, you can move out. And if you can't do one, you better do the other. The heathen have special cities in which alien entities live. Uh, they have special mountains where they say the spirits reside. Uh, often they, they have rocks or trees where they say it's inhabited uh, by, by a spirit. And so they have a, a real understanding of these things uh, more so than people in Christian lands who have refused to study the subject. <laughs> Isn't that something? Have refused to, 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 to stand up to the, to the problem and that, that have refused to have any comprehension and understanding of it. In dealing with a truth like this, every expose that we can make of Lucifer, who is Satan, it will weaken his kingdom. That's my purpose in teaching this class. That we are able in every expose that we can weaken his kingdom. You say, how is he weakened? Through knowledge. <laughs> when you know him, you're not afraid at all. When you know him, you know why you've had certain pains and, and you've had certain other things. You say, hey, you just get out of here with that. I will not accept it. I refuse it. I denounce it. Go with it. And immediately you have a great release. And so when you're educated properly and you know the truth, then you're more than a match for him. How many glad you're more than a match? Amen. Glory be to God. So the Lord, the Lord wants us to know. He wants us to know that every deliverance of victory on the face of this earth for any person weakens Satan's kingdom on the face of this earth. To every person that you set free, man, woman, or child, <laughs> you're increasing the power and the strength of the kingdom of God, and you are destroying the force of alien entities. If you're glad for it, say amen. amen. There are three heavens. The first one is what you call the earth, first heaven. Originally, God made the earth like Eden, a magnificent garden or a heaven. Satan's kingdom is part of this second heaven. The, the apostle Paul uh, described in Ephesians 2 and 2, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air. Wherever there's air, it's the second kingdom, beginning at the earth's pot and up. I don't know how far the air goes, how many miles it goes. Uh, but that is the area of his kingdom. His kingdom is limited to that, to that area. Christ illuminated this truth in John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of this world, and now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And John said in 14, 30, uh, right in front of that verse, uh, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and he hath nothing in me. Uh, he has a kingdom. And his kingdom is the air kingdom uh, in, the second, in the second heaven. God's throne is not in either of these two places. God's throne is in the third heaven. In 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 1, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations. Now listen carefully to verse 2. I knew a man in Christ 
above 14 years ago. That's a long time to wait for the next revelation. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. I, such and one caught up to the third heaven. And so here he knew a person. It was his guardian angel, very likely. And knew a man in Christ, a, a spiritual person, that took him up into the third heaven. Now in that heaven, he says, I knew, in that heaven, he was caught up into paradise. And then up in the paradise, and I heard, this is verse 4, I heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. So uh, uh, that was the third heaven. In this lesson, we're dealing exclusively with the second heaven, not the third heaven, where, where the throne of God is. The second heaven uh, where uh, Satan is the prince and the power of the air. Alien entities control this area with their chief prince from when they invade planet Earth. They, they, they seek to control nations. You ought to know that. And they do control some nations on the face of this earth today. They seek to control cities or districts or areas. They seek to possess a human as a means of expression of their evil. That's the only reason for it. I have observed alien entities who reside in a house, make it their chief place of operation out of a house. I have, I have known of alien entities using a tree or a heathen temple or a rock where devotees can come and communicate with them. They come to that place to communicate with them. They come to that place to communicate with them. You and I uh, know a man named uh, Howard Pittman, who's been before most of us here, a Baptist, a Baptist lay preacher, a police officer for the federal government in New Orleans, Louisiana, for 25 years. This man became ill and was sent to the hospital with a ruptured colon. He was pronounced legally dead on August 7th, 1979. On the hospital bed, the devil spoke to Howard in sweet words saying, don't breathe, quit. It'll be all over. Rest in peace at last. And suddenly, Howard Pittman's human spirit said, this is not God. This is the devil. You must resist him. So he cried out, no, no, I will live. I will live. At that burst of determination, an exercise of his willpower, he says that Satan fled from him. On that same night, August 7, 1979, uh, Mr. Pittman saw his spirit with his uh, guardian angel lift up out of his soul and spirit out of his body. He was escorted by this guardian angel into the second heaven. Mr. Pittman remembers that he did not leave the hospital room to enter the second heaven. Now that is pertinent. They don't miss it. He passed the dimension wall. Only spirit can pass through that wall. Underline the word dimension wall. That's all it keeps you from seeing the total spirit world. Now that is what I refuse the devil to make any manifestation to me. A thousand times he said, I will manifest myself. And I said, you will not. I will permit it. I will not permit him to move through the dimension wall from that heaven to our heaven here on the earth. I will not permit it. Only spirit can pass through that wall. Uh, he can see his body on the table. He looks back and sees his body. If you read books of those who have died, they all had similar circumstances. His spirit and soul were in the second heaven or the air. Uh, uh, this world, he discovered, was a place or area where principalities and powers of darkness rule around where we are today in the air. Howard Pittman saw spirits by unnumbered thousands in many different forms. These entities had different colorings, shapes. Some had human forms, others had animal forms, while others were part animal and part human as pagan deities. At the lowest level, there were those with hideous and revolting forms. Now, when you see terrible images that the heathen worship, their priest has seen them and have drawn them and they have made them. They have a, a spirit that they worship that looks exactly like the image that you saw there. And, and, and so when you see them, you'll know what these, these are fallen spirits made terrible looking because of the sins that they have permitted if you ever see them. The little boy in the Philippines uh, that used to disappear and we prayed for him. He always said it was a beautiful, beautiful girl, about 13, that was his age, that would touch him and he would disappear. When I prayed for him and cast the thing out of him, he saw her the last time. And he said, the same little girl looked 90 years old and was the ugliest witch she had ever seen. She, 
showed her true nature at the time that he was delivered and had no further relationship uh, with her. How many know the devil is a deceiver? Amen. Howard Pittmer said his guardian angel informed him that he must pass through the second heaven in order to enter the third heaven, for there is a throne of God where he could appear before God. So in the second heaven is where Satan's throne is, in the air. Only spirit penetrates that world. You physically will not be able to penetrate that world until you have a, a glorified body like Jesus had. You'll not be able to penetrate that world. A lot of spiritists, that's where they get in their trouble, trying to penetrate that world, that second heaven. They have no legal right at this moment to enter it. Only spirits penetrate that world. Demons are very aware of human activities and the protection of the Holy Spirit and the guardian angels around us. The second heaven is a scene of cosmic wars, as we see in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day in that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty and one days. On page 17 and point number three, Satan's throne and high and low ranking entities we want to acquaint you with. Uh, he is the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And he wasn't talking about a human being there at all, but he said that he was one in 20 days with, in a cosmic battle between archangels before he could come. Your prayers that you pray may have been answered right then, and the devil uh, set up a whole barrage of warfare against God and, and against angels, and they're sometime getting you deliverance. So don't walk off and leave it until God can't find you when he starts uh, to, to bring the gift to you. Are you still here? Yeah, stay put. And, and so, uh, and these alien entities, uh, they have something similar to a military rule. In the spirit world, there are strong government. There's military discipline of rank and order, and some entities carry titles like princes. We find that in Ephesians 6 and 12. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, you know, people that we can see like we are here, but we wrestle against principalities. A principality is an area over where the, a prince rules. We wrestle against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Every evil darkness in this world has a particular prince over it against spiritual wickedness in high places. The power, the power of these notable ones range from a small area that they rule over into an empire that the greater ones rule over. A satanic prince is given a special assignment and authority to function in the name of Satan to accomplish the job that Satan has given him to carry out. Each entity, and, and I'd like for you to underline this like I have, it's your number five. Each entity can only perform one job. I, I, now, I have found this all over the world. According to the Bible, there are no general practitioners uh, in, in the alien entities. Each spirit has only one area of expertise. Uh, the spirit of deafness cannot cause blindness. He can go and find a spirit of blindness and bring him back, but he cannot do it of his own. The strongest entities are the warring entities. Uh, Mr. Pittman saw these giants standing eight foot tall uh, that were the warring, the warring entities. He saw the second group of these, and, and uh, when he saw them in, in the second heaven, they would look like ordinary persons, human persons. And they only travel in groups and are always in a second place of authority. And they're such spirits that cause greed, that cause hate, that cause lust, that cause strife. Greed is a chief among those groups. Now, you can let a person get involved in greed and hate and lust, and a spirit takes advantage of that and possesses him, and that person is ruled and dominated and pushed around by something other than himself. I've just seen it so many times, and I know it's true. The third group of entities were half human and half animal. According to the revelation of Brother Pittman, the third group of these spirits that they witnessed were those who direct witchcraft, spiritism, and all kinds of pagan activity. The witchcraft area of demon spirits include uh, spirits of fear, spirits of suicide, self-destruction spirits, and some spirits who are mimicking human spirits, uh, those who manifest themselves as ghosts and things of that nature. He saw a fourth group of these, and they were fantastic order with, with awful power and authority under Satan. This fourth group uh, looked like known animals and sometimes unknown creatures. Uh, they were called murder and brutality, and, and names of that 
of that order. And some of these look horrible and terrible. Brother Pittman remembers that they were frightening in their appearances, but he said he was never afraid. His guardian angel stood right by him. As a protection, he, he, the guardian angel stood right with him when he was actually showing him the, the area in which, in which Lucifer reigns. The fourth group uh, is, is a terrible thing. I mean the fifth group, at point number 10. And remember, Brother Pittman said that the entities dealt in mysterious and special situations and special cases. They had power to cause epilepsy and insanity. He witnessed some entities so terrible that they are now held in chains. The guardian angel indicated that they had gone beyond their limitations. You ought to put a little line there. That they have gone beyond their limitations that Satan had told them to do and by their superior and these alien entities themselves were chained up by their superiors in the demon world because they went further than their own limitations and they were supposed to go. One of the great areas of information in this world of spirit is that the devil had to ask permission of God before he could touch someone even like Job. It was beyond his limitations. And if an angel goes beyond his limitation, uh, then he cannot any longer function. Uh, you read something remarkable about Jesus in Luke uh, 22 and 31. It says, The Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Uh, but I have prayed for you that, that your faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. All subvers subversive forces of this second, this second thing called heaven, second place, are under the restrictions of the third heaven where God rules. And the born-again believer cannot be destroyed by any force of power in that second heaven of alien entities because in 1 John 4 and 4, it says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And so you have, no one has ever to have any fear that in this second world of where alien entities, entities dwell, that you have any fear that they can come into your physical world here and hurt you because you are clothed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and also in the armor of God. And there is absolute and complete, uh, complete security there. And when the Lord Jesus says, no one can pluck you out of the hand, he's talking to that bunch. <laughs> and, and, they, and they better know it. So what a victory for the people of God. Uh, what a glory for us that are walking in this total victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. What a life to live. What a life to live. And I look back all over the world and see people that we have set free from so many awful things that they could never have been set free from had we not been there. I'm so glad that we have one that's all power over alien entities and that he has the capacity to set humans free right now. I hope that you've been enlightened by today's teaching series by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. So many people have been blessed by his teachings on God's Word. If you are one of those people, I would love to hear from you. Write me at the address on the screen. I am Peter Sumrall, and thank you for watching and supporting LaCie Broadcasting.